the Lord's Supper, on the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the day when the Passover lamb was killed, the disciples asked him, Where would you have us go to prepare the Passover meal for you? So Jesus sent two of his disciples with these instructions, Go into the city, and there a man will come to you carrying a jar of water. Follow him to the house he enters, and say to the owner, The master says, Where is the room where I may eat the Passover meal with my disciples? Then he will show you a large room upstairs, already arranged and furnished. There you will prepare for us. The disciples went off. When they reached the city, they found everything as Jesus had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were at table eating, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who shares my meal. They were deeply distressed at hearing this and asked him, one after the other, You don't mean me, do you? And Jesus answered, It is one of you twelve, one who dips his bread in the dish with me. The Son of Man is going, as the scriptures say he will. But, alas for that man, by whom the Son of Man is betrayed, better for him if he had never been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. And he said, Take this, it is my body. Then he took a cup, and after he had given thanks, he passed it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said, This is my blood, the blood of the covenant, poured out for many. Truly, I say to you, I will not taste the fruit of the vine again, until that day when I drink the new wine in the kingdom of God. Biblical Lesson During the Passover supper, Jesus wanted to clarify the meaning of his imminent passion. He was headed toward a death which he freely accepted, a death that would save the world. What would his salvation be? It would bring human history to its fulfillment. People and races needed to mature, to confront one another, and finally to be united in one body. The world would pass through a thousand crises and deaths in order to come to the resurrection. Within such a history, God could spread and distribute the riches of his spirit and bring to holiness his elect. Jesus has presented a message that should guide humanity, but a people of God was also needed, a yeast, a minority who would feel committed to God's work, and to whom God would commit himself. Twelve centuries before Jesus' birth, God made a covenant with the people of Israel on Mount Sinai. They and their children would be among all races, the chosen people of God. As time passed and the infidelities of God's people became more evident, the prophets understood that something more was needed, a covenant whose prime effect would be the forgiveness of sins. The family of God could no longer be identified with a certain race, but would be a family of believers, pardoned of their sins. On the eve of his death, Jesus remembered the first covenant on Sinai, when the blood of sacrificial animals was spilled, he would soon spill his blood, for many, that is, for a multitude. This many were first the remnant of Israel. These are those who would recognize the Savior and believe in him, entering the church, and with them, all those who would be integrated, coming from other nations. So Jesus purifies through his death those who will be his own people, in the world. Whenever we celebrate the Eucharist, we renew this covenant. Jesus is among us, as we remember, his sacrifice. He becomes our spiritual bread, and consecrates us to his Father, so that we may participate, more and more, in his work of salvation.
Jesus' Last Supper was the first Christian liturgy. Unlike the solemn temple ceremonies, the liturgical service of primary importance in the life of the church would be a communal meal in which Jesus offers himself as the bread of life.